The Fourier uncertainty principle states that if a signal has very short duration and time, such that one can pinpoint precisely its occurrence with negligible spread, then it will be with great uncertainty to pinpoint the frequency of that signal, since its spectrum will be very spread out in frequency. We quantify the notion of spread by its standard deviation, herein denoted by sigma t and omega for time and frequency respectively. Now, if the signal has very resolved spectral component instead, then it conversely will require the signal to spread out across time. This inverse relationship between the variance of the signals in time and frequency domain applies to other pairs of dual domains. For example, the signal in spatial domain versus that of its dual in the wave number domain. This inverse relationship between the variants can be made most apparent using Gaussian signals. A Gaussian signal in the spatial domain with a sigma x equals alpha has a Fourier transformed pair which is also a Gaussian function, but with a sigma k of 1 divided by 2 alpha. The product of the variance of the functions in their dual domains then yields exactly half. What will this product be for general signals? And how is this related to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics? This is what we will discuss in this video. First, we set the stage and consider functions in X, and its reciprocal domain in K. Let's denote these functions to be f of X and g of K respectively. We assume they are Fourier transform pair related through the Fourier transformation as shown. In connection to quantum mechanics, these functions are analogous to wave functions in the position and momentum representations. Thus, we would like to make sure that these functions are properly normalized. In other words, their integrated modulus square should be 1. The modulus square of f and g yields us their respective probability functions. The expectation of position x is then given by the integrated product of the probability function with x. Similar expressions can also be written for the wave number k. Without any loss in generality, we shall define the variables x and k such that their expectation value are zeros. Recall that the standard deviation is a measure of how the individual measurements on average deviates from the mean. Mathematically, the variance in x can be expressed as the expectation value of the square of the position relative to its mean. Since the expectation of x, x bar, is zero, we can write the variance of x as follows. Similar expressions can also be obtained for the variance of k. We can also express the final form in a more compact manner as follows, taking note of the fact that the functions f of x and g of k are in general complex, but the variables x and k are real. With these expressions at hand, we can then write down the product of the variance of x with variance of k as follows. To proceed, we need the following identities. Given that f of x and g of k are Fourier pairs, we recall that the Fourier transform of the differential of f with respect to x is given by k multiplied by g of k. We can then rewrite the integral in green using the Plancheril theorem, which states that the norm of a function and its Fourier transformed pair must be equal. Thus, we end up with a new variance product expressed only in terms of the variable x. To proceed, we shall recall the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which allows us to write the product of two integral of modulus square as an inequality as shown. In the language of quantum mechanics, this inequality is basically saying that the product of the inner products of two functions must always be larger than their cross inner products. We can expand out the modulus square in terms of the product of a complex number z with its complex conjugate as shown. The magnitude square of this complex number z must always be larger than the square of its imaginary part. We thus arrived at the so-called Fourier uncertainty principle. But we can further simplify this expression. With some math using integration by parts, one can further establish a simple relation for z minus z conjugate as shown in the blue box. Feel free to pause here if you would like to go over the math. Using this identity, it allows us to arrive at a simpler form of the Fourier uncertainty principle. By first inserting the relation we derived from integration by parts, we obtain that the general result that the product of the variance of x with variance of k must always be larger than or equal to 1 over 4. 
since the standard deviation is by definition positive, then the sigma x and sigma k product must always be larger or equal to half. This is the famous Fourier uncertainty principle. The Fourier uncertainty principle has almost the same form as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, apart from the physical constant h bar. This is no coincidence, and their similarity can be traced to the fact that the uncertainty principle is a statement about conjugate observables, whose eigenfunctions are related by Fourier transformation in the dual space. As we alluded to previously, the functions g of k and f of x are analogous to the quantum wave functions in the momentum and position representations. These wave functions phi of p and psi of x are related through the Fourier transformation, where the momentum p is equal to h bar multiplied by wave number k, namely the de Broglie relation. We also highlight the following result we obtained earlier. Herein, we can also make direct connection to the quantum mechanics quantities as shown. And the swapping of the function g of k in the second integral is nothing but just a change of representation from momentum to position in the quantum mechanics language. In summary, the Fourier and Heisenberg uncertainty principle are mathematically the same. If one makes the mapping of the functions f and g in the dual Fourier domain to the quantum mechanics wave functions in the position and momentum representations. In addition, momentum is related to wave number via the de Broglie relation. We refer you to these two related videos in the same playlist which discuss more about the quantum wave functions and their representations, and the derivation of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.